they be cramping my style all week. Craving chocolate trees, checking pants, checking seeds, sipping herbal tea, and fight for menstrual equity. Hey, I kick cramps at. You're now tuned in to the Kick Cramps Ass Podcast with your host, Brittany Walker, advocating for menstrual equity, period poverty, and womb wellness. New episodes on Menstruation Monday. Welcome to the Kick Crass Ass Podcast, where I'm your host, Brittany Walker, and you've made it to Season 2, Episode 18, where we'll be discussing new laws that may hinder your period. All right, guys, so today is Monday, July 22nd, 2004. July is Fibroid Awareness Month, which is one of the reasons why we are talking about these new laws. And July is also Minority Mental Health Month. All right, guys, so you know we like to kick off each episode with the I am power statement, I representing inspiration, A representing affirmations, and M representing manifestations. And the I am power statement for today is, I am understanding the new laws that are passed in the United States that may negatively impact my wellness. Therefore, I will make logical decisions moving forward with what I put in and on my body, Shay. All right, guys, and you know we like to roll into a quote of the day, and today's is, once you learn to read, you will forever be free. I'm going to say that again from the good old Frederick Douglass. Once you learn to read, you will be forever free, meaning it is so important to read for yourself. It is so important to research for yourself. It is so important to read your labels, but we're going to get all into that in just a moment. You know we always are sipping on our good old cramp elixir, so we're going to take a quick sip. We want you to enjoy this commercial break, and we'll be right back. Have you tried our best seller, the cramp elixir? It's our herbal tea blend designed to reduce and eliminate menstrual cramps, PMS symptoms, and other uterine health issues that are hindering your day-to-day progress. Our elixir may decrease inflammation, reduce stress and anxiety, regulate blood flow, balance your mood, and it can kick cramps ass. It includes a variety of herbs, including hibiscus, red raspberry leaf, calendula, motherwort, awashaganda, plus more. Head over to kickcrampsass.org and grab yours today. Now, back to the show. Welcome back from that commercial break. We hope that you enjoyed it. So let's go ahead and get into today's episode. Again, new laws that may hinder your period. Now we have discussed before how food is medicine and you are what you eat. So this includes the meals that you take in, your snacks, beverages, alcohol, medication, anything that you're putting in your body and actually drinking and swallowing has an impact on your health. And we've also talked to you guys before about toiletries, household products, and other things that you use, whether that's makeup, your deodorant, your toothpaste, hair products, face products, your moisturizer, the cleaning products you use around the house, the laundry detergent you use, your menstrual products, your toilet paper, anything that you use has a label on it. So it's very important for you to read these ingredients because these ingredients can be hindering to your overall body, which in turn can bring on disease, um, ailments, diagnosis, and things that you might not want to deal with. And in turn, not only will these things affect your body, it will also affect your menstruation, your entire menstrual cycle. All right, guys, so all four cycles can be hindered by this. Now, based on the ingredient, the toxin, or the chemical that may be included in these food items or these toiletries or these other products that you may be using in and on your body, it could also have adverse reactions in the body like fibroids, endometriosis, PCOS, which is polycystic ovary syndrome, infertility, menorrhagia, dysmenorrhea, 
imbalance hormones, which we know that can lead to mood swings, anxiety, mental health issues. We also have imbalanced pH. You can have um, imbalanced pH balance. So if you're thinking, oh, I have an odor, or I have a smell, or I keep having this itchy discharge or this uh, discolored discharge, that could be because of your pH balance. And then also your PMS symptoms could be hindered from these ingredients, meaning you might have more tender breasts during your cycle, acne, nausea, maybe bloat a bit more things of that sort all right guys so why am i saying all this right and it's for july being fibroid awareness month we want to talk about some new laws that have been passed all this season and past season throughout the entire duration of the kick cramps ass podcast we have been very adamant about what you eat and what you put in your body and of course we are a plant-based nutritionist an actual nutritionist but we have that added specialty of that plant-based lifestyle added to it. However, I want to give you some laws that is not just me trying to force you to be plant-based or force you to eat the way that I eat or force this new lifestyle into your head, but I really want to give you some real research like we have been supplying to you guys. But this is just added research to validate, corroborate, substantiate, whatever you want to say on anything else that we have discussed in the past. So new laws that have been passed within the last year. So we're talking from last summer up until now. Now, some of these laws have passed and some of these are actual bills that have been introduced and sent to the actual um, Senate that's um, preparing to go to the assembly and be either accepted and rejected. So we're just going to go through a different list of items. All right. So October of 2023, California actually passed the California Food Safety Act, which is an actual law that was approved. Now, this bans the manufacturing, distribution and sale of food and beverages containing the food and color additives nominated vegetable oil, which is BBO, potassium bromate, have propyl praben, and then red dye number three. Now in January, 2024, Washington introduced a bill called the HB 1921, which is a food safety bill similar to California's. Now it is supposed to ban the use of carcinogenic red dye number three, along with brominated vegetable oil, propyl Prabens and the potassium bromates from foods manufactured, sold, delivered, or distributed. Now, in April of 2024, just a few months ago, Illinois passed the actual Illinois Food Safety Act, which is similar to California as well. Now, this will take an effect in 2027 for manufacturers and retailers. It will be 2028, but they will also ban the foods, beverages, colors, and additives of the same four items that we've listed in the other states. All right, guys, now I know California as well, their law will go into effect in 2027 as well. Now, in March of 2024, New York introduced two bills that is now sitting with the committee Senate. We have Bill A6. 424B, but it's to prohibit the use of certain substances as food additives or color additives in the manufacture and commercial distribution of food products. And guess what? It also happens to be very similar to the four items that we've already mentioned. Now, the justification of this law. And before we go into that, just be mindful, guys, all of this information is public information. You can Google the actual bills, you can Google the actual laws, but if you go to the actual state, actual um, official website for the state, you're able to look up any current laws, any bills that are, have been introduced, things that are being worked on. You're able to look up this information. It's all public. So this is not anything that I'm making up. This is pulled from real resources from each actual state, okay? Now, again, the justification of these bill, these two bills that are going to be passed in New York. Now, while the use of food additives to enhance the shelf life, taste, or texture of various commercial food products is nothing new, the science behind the health effects of increased consumption of such additives is shedding new light on just how dangerous some of them could be. Now, I'm going to pause for a second. Notice that these items are added for shelf life, taste, and texture. Just because it tastes good doesn't mean that it's healthy for you. Just because the texture of it is satisfying to your taste buds doesn't mean it's healthy for you. And just because it has 
Shelf life, meaning that it's been sitting on the grocery store shelf, does not mean that it's healthy for you. We're having to add chemicals and products into these items so that they can have longer shelf life. And that means that it's not fresh food. That means that we had to add chemicals in it. That means we had to add toxins in it for it to last longer. That is a way for these grocery stores to make money. That is a way for the United States to make money. That is a way for capitalism to continue to thrive. Meanwhile, we're having these cheaper packaged foods that are in the store. We're consuming them for years and years and years. And then we're wondering why we have fibroids in our 30s and 40s. We're wondering why everybody in our family is developing cancer. We wonder why everybody has heart disease. We're wondering why the United States is considered the obese country because we have so many unhealthy habits and so many ailments in our country. All right, guys, remember that. We've had a discussion with you guys before. If you go look up the country Fiji, Fiji has yet to have any cancer cases. Did you hear that? No cancer cases, zero. Why? Because it's the way of living is what they're putting in and on their body. All right, so let's come back. Now, the this new legislation protects New Yorkers from five of the most pervasive and harmful food additives by prohibiting the manufacture or sale of food containing any of the following. So we have that BVO again, the brominated vegetable oil, which they have found is linked to nervous system damage. This is actual information they have listed in the bill and not something I'm just making up, guys. They also don't want you to have the potassium bromide because it is also linked to cancer. The propyl prebens linked to hormone and reproductive system harm. We're going to say that again. Pro pill prey bins has linkage to hormone and reproductive system harm. Fibroids, endometriosis, infertility, menorrhagia, which is heavy menstrual bleeding, dysmenorrhea, which is heavy menstrual cramps. Hmm. We're also going to look into what these items are in just a moment. So I just want y'all to sit on that. It is linked to hormone and reproductive system harm. The government has put this in writing, guys. All right. Also, red dye number three is linked to cancer and behavioral problems in children. So why you think that, okay, your child can't sit still. Oh, they have ADHD. They have autism. You know, they're, just, they're dyslexic. They have learning disabilities. You know, maybe you need to give them Ritalin to calm down. You know, no, it could just be linked to the foods that these kids are eating. It could be linked to the fast foods, the candies, things of that sort. So we're going to talk about that in a second. Also, butylated hydroxyinosol. All right, guys, that is also linked to cancer. And the fifth item that is listed here that we have not mentioned with any of the other states or bills yet is azodicarbonide, which is also linked to cancer. Then they also want to go against titanium dioxide, which is linked to DNA damage and harm to the immune system. So when you have doctors saying, oh, you can't blame moms. Moms, don't blame yourselves if you have birth defects, if you have this, if you have that. Yes, you don't want to blame yourself, but we also have to take accountability of what we've been putting in and on our bodies, what our mothers were putting in their bodies when they had us, what our grandmothers were putting in their bodies when they had our mothers, our fathers, and so on and so forth. These things are linked into our bodies that attach to our immune system. So imagine if you're menstruating each month, all your eggs are being affected by these things. Your uterus is being affected. Your cervix is being affected. Your fallopian tubes, that's how we get into endometriosis, cysts, fibroids, all these other issues, cervical cancer, things of that sort. We have to be mindful. Again, what we put in and on our body determines the real path to the fountain of youth. All right, guys. Now, this bill is similar to the legislation that has been enacted in California. Now, this bill is similar to the legislation that has been enacted in California and with the exception of the use of red dye number three in candied cherries. Now, the European Union already prohibits the sale of food containing any one of these substances. And that's something we've talked about this season and last season. When you go look up some of these banned items and foods that we're discussing, there are so many other countries that have already banned these items. A lot of countries in Europe, Canada, Asia, a lot of countries and continents are just not having these items in their foods. Why? Because it's causing health issues, causing for um, the lack of life longevity, it's causing you to be 
ill and sick in your 30s, 40s, and 50s when a lot of people in these other countries are living to 90 and 100 years old easily without any major issues. All right, guys. Now, we just listed a couple of states for you. We talked about California. We talked about Washington. We talked about New York. And we talked about Illinois. Now, when I say Washington, that's actual Washington, the state where like Seattle is located at, not Washington, D.C., okay? But there are additional states that have passed similar legislations. We have Maryland, they have the SB 2637. We have Missouri, they have the HB 2474. We have New Jersey, they have the A4132, which is similar to getting rid of the four main ingredients that we have discussed so far. Now, Pennsylvania, they have two bills that are in the works, HB 2116, that bans not only all of the items that we have already mentioned, but also red dye number 40, yellow dye number five, yellow dye number six, blue dye number one, blue dye number two, and their second bill is HB 2117 that's actually banning additional additives to foods. Then we also have Rhode Island with H. 7300, South Dakota with HB 1169, and West Virginia with HB 56. So what does all of this mean? We will talk about it after this quick commercial break. Welcome to Kit Cramps as Dot org now feel free to subscribe and get 15 percent off by doing so you're subscribing to our newsletter and you receive the latest news resources and updates we appreciate you for connecting with us so we want to get you with 15 percent off on your first order so go ahead and leave your first name your last name and your email address and you'll have this 50 percent off coupon that you can use towards your first order now back to the show welcome back for that commercial break we hope that you guys enjoyed it so we left you with that question right before the commercial break what does all of this mean so let's get into it i named all these items but let's talk about actual foods that have these items all right foods and beverages so let's start with brominated vegetable oil the bvo that's in sodas so you'll find that in mountain dew fanta orange orange crush squirt you also will find it in athletic beverages like Powerade and Gatorade. Pause. <laughs> so you're thinking, we have all these athletes around the world. We have the Olympics is getting ready to, to start. And you have Powerade and Gatorade being promoted for these athletes to drink while they're performing. And these are chemicals and things that are banned are in the process of being banned. All right, guys? Energy drinks. Energy drinks are not good for you it doesn't matter who the brand is five hour energy red bull monster they're not good for you all right guys they have so many chemicals that lead to these cancers and these other diseases we have fruit flavored syrups so if you go to get a cocktail and your cocktail is pretty with all these different colors those are fruit colored syrups if you're going to get an icy or like a slushy from the uh, convenience store or the gas station or the corner store whatever you would like to call it the food market those are fruit flavor syrups you think about something like nesquik or like when you're making chocolate milk strawberry milk things of that sort those are fruit flavored syrups. So anything that's going on ice cream sundaes, any of that, they have a lot of added chemicals and toxins. All baked goods, pretty much all baked goods have BVO in it. All right, guys. And pasta. If you're not authentically making pasta from scratch where you know where that flour came from, where you have a healthy flour, maybe like a quinoa flour, brown rice flour, flour, something along those lines. BVO is included in your pastas. That's why you will see after you eat pasta, you might get super bloated or the next day you might wake up and your stomach just feels super heavy. All right, guys, moving on to potassium bromate. They're included in all breads. You hear me? All breads, bread, bread, bread. So anything that has to do with hamburgers, pizzas, garlic toast, <laughs> hot dog buns, crackers, it's inside of. Also in bagels, crackers, donuts, muffins, pastries so yeah don't go to a for those of you who's still in corporate america that might have continental breakfast for your conference your conference meeting that you might have that day and they have that big great tray of all the different pastries on it that look so good they all have potassium bromate unfortunately pizza crust and the pizza dough pretzels cookies 
tortillas. Again, if it's not authentically being made, it's in there. I think one of my favorite things about tortillas is growing up, I grew up in South Texas, um, from East Texas, but grew up in South Texas. And tortillas was everywhere. All my Hispanic friends, my Latin and Latina friends. This is what we were eating, breakfast tacos, quick tacos, things of that sort. Not until I went to an actual country outside of the United States, a Latin country that I discovered, damn, like authentic tortilla tastes different <laughs> than what you're buying at the store. So just be mindful of these things. And we've already mentioned buns with the breads, hamburgers, and hot dogs. Now for pro pill pravens, now those are in cereal. I'd meat. So when we say cereal, in the morning, a quick, easy fix for parents is give a bowl of cereal to your kids. A lot of kids, when they um, are in school, K through 12, a lot of them will eat cereal in the morning. So be mindful of those things. But you wonder why they might go to school. They might have learning disabilities. They might have issues trying to focus, trying to stay in tune. When they hit puberty, they have acne really bad and you don't understand why. When the seasons change, they get really sick and they get the flu. And it's just like, oh, you always get sick when the seasons change. But it's like, no, it's what you're putting in my body right? And when we say dry meats, we're talking about like lunch meats, things that have been made and then like curated and then like thinly sliced, dehydrated meats. And this also goes for um, plant-based meat alternatives. That's why as being plant-based, there's a difference between being plant-based and being vegan. And when you have a lot of these vegan meat alternatives, they have a lot of chemicals and toxins in them. So I will never promote for you to go get impossible meat, beyond meat, all these things filled with soy and all these other additives. Nope, nope, nope. I'm not here for it. If we're going to do meat substitutes, we're talking about walnut meat. We're talking about jackfruit. We're talking about all different types of mushrooms, whether that's oyster mushrooms, lion's mane, things of that sort. All right, guys. Beer. Yes, it is in beer. It's also in wine. Yes, I know, I know, I know. Some of you are like, okay, just because you don't drink alcohol no more, just because you are, have fought alcoholism, you don't have to throw it in our face what these chemicals are. I have been telling you guys over and over again, I have went completely plant-based, had a clean body and was still cramping and couldn't figure out why until I stopped drinking liquor. And it's because I finally got rid of those added chemicals that were being added to my body. You got to remember, liquor only gives you energy. That's the only kind of health benefit it has is that it gives you energy. Anything else is empty calories. It's a lot of sugar. It's a lot of chemicals and toxins that are being added to your body. So I always have my clients and my consumers or even people just asking random questions. Why let go of alcohol? My question to you is why consume it? Once you know what all it does to your body, why do you consume it? And if your answer is, oh, because I'm depressed. Oh, I just had got out of breakup. Work was stressful today. Everybody in my family getting on my nerves. And like, I'm in a bad mood. If you have all these reasons, then you need to realize that you're then using it for a vice and that it's not being used for a positive health factor is being used for advice. And I know that liquor is at all these parties and it's at all these events, but you also don't have to be a bandwagon person and do what everybody else is doing. You can stand out and do what's right for you and invest in your own health. All right, guys. Also in soft drinks, so all type of sodas. So anytime you go to a restaurant, fast food joint, and they have the soft drink machine and you could just pick what drink you want, those are soft drinks. Jam. So you might like a peanut butter and jelly sandwich, but you need to be careful of the jams that you're getting out of the store. That's why you might see some of the, the fresh preservatives that people make are a little bit more expensive and they won't last as long on the shelf because they're freshly made without all that chemical in it. All right. Canned goods. Unfortunately, canned goods have this item in it. So be mindful of the canned goods that you use. Yogurt. Yogurt has been one of those things that yogurt is so healthy, you need it. And especially like, hey, if you have bacterial vaginosis, BV, if you have a yeast infection, if you have UTIs, you know, eating yogurt could be good for you. But in all, yogurt is really not that good for the, the womb and for the body overall. And then processed foods, anything processed, anything manufactured, anything made in um, a manufacturing company that has to be packaged or put together, put in a box, put in a bag, any of that, you need to be mindful of these things. All right. So let's talk about red dye number three. It's in candy. So your Starburst, your Skittles. We talked about Gatorade earlier, the red Gatorade, the red Powerade, Hawaiian Punch, you know, anything that's red that you grew up with, Twizzlers, <laughs> Red Hots, all of those things are packed with red dye number three. All types of sodas, so Big Red, any type of Fruit Punch, Fanta, anything you could think of. 
juice from concentrate. So any of those fruitopia, snapples, Minute Maid juices, all of those things are made from concentrate and have these dyes in them. Insure. This was shocking to me. Insure is one of those things that the doctor will actually diagnose to you. Oh, you're having a problem maintaining your weight. Drink the Insure Plus and they'll help you maintain your weight. Do this, do that. Insure is not healthy for you, period. Pediasure. This was shocking. Pediasure is something that you prescribe to kids that are dehydrated. When they're sick, they're like, oh yeah, give them some Pediasure. Put those electrolytes back in their system. They're going to be okay. It's not good for you. <laughs> it's not good for you. Nesquik, we talked about that earlier, that flavored syrup, yogurt, we've talked about before, cookies. So a lot of these uh, red velvet cake cookies and cupcakes and um, cakes and all these other things has that dye in it. Frozen food, so popsicles, ice cream, sorbet, any type of frozen treat. And then also when it comes to like actual frozen foods that might have red in it or if they need to add red and mix it with another color to give something like a fluorescent color, they will do that. And you're thinking, why would they add dye to food? Because when you're mixing the chemicals and the toxins and all that, it's not something that's appealing when you look at it. It looks crazy. So you have to add color. You have to add things to it to make it look good. Just think about, have you ever had a cake and the cake looks so pretty? It's so well decorated. But then you bite into it and you're like, oh, it's dry or it's not that good or it's not as spongy as I would have preferred. It's the same thing that you want to think about when it comes to these uh, dyes being added to food. It might have been made or a lot of frozen foods. Those are foods that are already going bad that already had like was molding, getting soiled, but the farmers or people didn't want to lose money. The grocery stores don't want to miss out on the money because of the contract they have with these farmers. So guess what they're going to do? They're going to hook it up <laughs> and make it look good so they can still sell it and hurry up and throw it in the freezer and freeze it so that you can use it later. Right guys, these are things that really happen. If you don't believe me, go watch What the Hell. You can go Google these things. These things are factual. Same thing with the meat. Meat um, actually has red dye three. And you would think like meat has a lot of these meats. Like we've discussed before, when you're a cow strapped to a machine, you can't say out, you're hurting my nipples, but you got a machine steadily making me milk. Once I started bleeding, once I start chafing, once I start pussing, all of that gets into the food, right? But it's the same thing once you cut that cow open. If that cow has cancer, things of that sort, they just cut the cancer off, add a little dye to the meat, package it up, and then they turn around and sell it to you. But you wonder why all these people are getting cancer and why cancer is linked to red meat but also why the Cancer Association has on their website to promote eating red meat. But they know that red meat has cancer in it, are carcinogenic ingredients that lead to cancer. So that's behooves me. Another food that has dye on it is red potatoes. I know you don't want to believe it, especially my people from the South. Y'all are probably mad at me because we use red potatoes in all of our like seafood boils, crawfish boils for a snack. You know, it's a staple, especially in like Louisiana. However, if you can go watch videos, they will pull like old soil potatoes from a farm and then they put it on like this belt and they're just have this little spray, it almost like a little spray hose and they're just spraying the red dye on the potatoes and allowing it to dry before they put it in a bag and ship it to the grocery store. So be mindful of these things. Protein shakes. You will hear all day people promoting, do, do a protein shake, do a protein shake. It's going to help you when you work out. It's going to give you the protein that you need. I do not do protein shakes. I did do protein shakes before I went plant-based. I don't do protein shakes afterwards because again, I can go just go to a plant form of protein which is collard greens, which is beans, which is mushrooms, chickpeas, lentils, you know, nuts, seeds, my cashews, my walnuts, like hemp seeds. I can go get protein from those things. Cacao powder. Yeah, so I don't need to take a protein shake to help me build muscle. All right, guys. And then lastly, for the red dye three, we have peppermints. The, the actual, not the peppermint mint, I mean, I'm sorry, not the peppermint herb itself, but the actual candy, the red and white candy that is popular around Christmas time. You know, you went to church when you were younger, the one that your your grandmama, your mama kept in her purse and will slide you one halfway through uh, the service. <laughs> Those peppermints, they are not good for you. They're nothing but dye and sugar. That's it. You think it's good to make your breath smell good, but if that's the case, then go boil you some mint. <laughs> boil you some mint, clove, and some cinnamon, and let that brew, and take that liquid, and that could be your mouthwash right there. Now let's move forward 
to butylated hydroxyanosol. All right, guys, now that is inside of butter, lard, chewing gum. I know you're cr going crazy like chewing gum. Chewing gum was one of those things I found out while I was getting my master's in nutrition education. And I found out that all that's included in chewing gum and the added sugars and the added things that they put in it, it's really not that healthy for you. And each time you chew and that piece of food product our food item is releasing the chemicals into the enzymes in your mouth and it's just not good for you processed foods chips snacks and when we say snacks anything that's packaged something you can go down the snack aisle and grab cookies honey buns chips fruit snacks anything like that beer again in alcohol vegetable oil you will learn that there are other healthier oils that if you do want to fry food if you do want to use some type of oil when you're roasting or or doing some type of baking there are other oils that are more conducive sunflower oil grapeseed oil avocado oil things of that sort coconut oil is not that best to actually cook with um i will add it to items but i don't like cooking with it and then also Flavoring agents, you will see on the back of an item that it will have natural flavor. One thing that irks me is you can't go to the store and get like traditional lemonade, just lemon, water, and some form of healthy sugar, which I would prefer like a date of some sort, right? Even if you want to do like organic maple syrup or raw sugar cane. But a lot of these lemonades, it will say lemons, water, citric acid, white sugar, like traditional just granulated sugar, which we know is not good for us at all. And then it'll say natural flavor or flavor agents. What's that? <laughs> what is that? And you will find that in a lot of ingredients. There's this browning sauce I used to love to use before I went plant-based that I would use for my Caribbean foods. If you look at that browning sauce, it has nothing but a whole bunch of chemicals and then flavor agents. And you're like, what the heck is flavor agents? So be mindful that these are chemicals to make the food look good, taste good, have different type of texture so it is appealing to you and that you actually like it. But like any other chemical, you can get addicted to it we have to be mindful you can get addicted to caffeine you can get addicted to nicotine you can get addicted to cocaine methamphetamine heroin you can also get addicted to food and food items as well because again these are chemicals once your body starts telling you that you need it then that's when you don't realize that you have an addiction we talked about this several times before about sugar cravings sugar cravings is a form of addiction your body is telling you i need that sugar you haven't given it to me give it to me now and instead of you recognizing that that's what it really is most people just fueling to be like oh i have a sweet tooth let me go ahead and fuel it not realizing that you're adding to that bad habit all right guys now moving forward to azo dicarbonide all right guys that is included in breads bagels pastries pizza buns tortillas as well titanium dioxide it's in candy coffee creamer that was a big one for me coffee creamer there are so many people that drink coffee and they don't like natural black coffee they want creamer in their coffee and most coffee creamers have titanium dioxide in it it's in chocolate not dark chocolate but your milk chocolate your white chocolates the triple chocolates once you start taking that original dark chocolate and adding stuff to it that is what they're talking about all right pastries canned fruits so if a recipe says hey you need the canned diced tomatoes canned sliced I mean, I'm sorry, the canned dice pineapples and add the pineapple syrup juice to the to the dish so it adds to it. No, all of that is bad. It's just been sitting and festering in chemicals and toxins. Toothpaste. We talked about toothpaste to you guys before several times. Toothpaste has chemicals that you need to be mindful of. Milk. We talked about dairy and how dairy has an effect on the body. People think, oh, well, it doesn't affect me because I'm not lactose intolerant. However, there are still ingredients like the casein and other things that are included in milk that are not conducive for the body that are directly connected. And there's real research that you can go Google for yourself that's connected to heart disease, cancer, diabetes, and uterine health issues. Salad dressing. You're thinking, what? Salad dressing, salad is healthy. Yes, salad is healthy, but anybody that is a nutritionist will tell you salad is healthy all day until you add meat to it, until you add cheese to it, or until you add your salad dressing. If you're not making your salad dressing yourself, flip that label over on that salad dressing bottle and you're going to see, I'm sorry, flip that bottle over so you can read the label and you're going to see that it's a lot of added sugar and chemicals into the salad dressing. So that's what makes it no longer healthy. 
All right, guys, and other condiments. So we're talking about like mustards, ketchups, barbecue sauces, things of that sort. I try to get like uh, chili paste, aka like sriracha, like Asian hot sauce. And I had to go like pick it through different sriracha's because they had all these like different added chemicals in it now and i'm like what it, that was not a thing when i was younger all right so moving forward to red dye number 40 dairy products baked goods candy um soda snacks packaged food cereals beverages not made from squash, fresh squeezed juice so as you can see we're starting to repeat some of the same items so that shouldn't let you know wait these items not only just have one chemical they have multiple chemicals yes multiple chemicals that are affecting not only your womb, but your overall wellness. That's your mental, your emotional, your physical, and your spiritual. Now we have yellow dye number five, also in soda, candy, pastries, packaged foods, yogurt, but it's also in makeup and other cosmetics, medications, and supplements. So we talked about makeup before. When you flip over your foundation and your concealer and things of that sort, and you see that it has 20 to 30 things listed, and you're like, what is all of this? But at the very bottom, you will see where it has all these different dyes, the yellows, the blues, the greens, the reds, this, this, and this, and you're not paying any attention to it, but those things are harming the body. So when you get that really nice matte um, eyeshadow set and it got all these fluorescent colors and you're like, ooh, that's going to be so pretty. Does your prettiness or your how you present yourself to others, is that more important than your health? And those are things that you really have to start asking yourself before you start shifting your mind and making applicable changes to truly prevent or eliminate the uterine issues that you are dealing with or any health issues that you're dealing with. When I saw medications, I was like, <laughs> so y'all know how I feel about the pharmaceutical companies, of course. But however, you're also adding additional chemicals <laughs> to give it color and to make it look good that is still not conducive for the body. And they know this and they're still adding it in there and we're still taking it. So how can these pharmaceutical companies be mad at us? Because we know what we're taking. We have the option to read for ourselves and have freedom of our minds and we're choosing not to. So we really can't get mad at anybody but ourselves, we have to take accountability that we have to be the person to stand up and be like, hey, this is what I'm not going to put in my body anymore. Right. So moving on to yellow dye number six, also in candy baked goods, bouillon. And if you don't know what bouillon is, that's a southern thing. They have these cubes called bouillon cubes. There's chicken, there's beef, vegetable, things of that sort that you could just drop the little cube in like some water or whatever you cook it and it gives it the flavor. You got to be mindful of those things. All right, guys, cereal, chips, packaged foods, and yellow dye number six is also in medications and pet food and clothing. Yeah, if they're going to put it in our food, why wouldn't they put it in pet food? And you wonder why certain animals can't live past a certain year or while their life longevity is not as long as it used to be. Or, you know, they'll say, hey, a chihuahua can live to 20 years, but the average chihuahua now live into like 10 or 12 years. It's probably because of what you're giving it. All right. And then when it comes to clothing, we talked about polyester and nylon being two ingredients that we do not recommend using because of all the chemicals and the things that have been associated and linked to like cancer and other diagnosis. But you need to be mindful of that. So when you have cool clothes that are like bright and loud and all these really dope colors, especially being an 80s baby, I am all about like neon and bright colors and things of that sort. However, you have to be mindful that if they're using those dyes, your skin, as we mentioned so many times before, I, I don't know if you guys are tired of hearing me say it, but I'm going to keep saying it. <laughs> your skin is the largest organ on your body. So is if your skin is absorbing it, then it's going straight directly into your bloodstream and it starts affecting your body. All right. Now, blue dye number one, you'll find that in like liqueur. And again, if you have like a blue Caraco drink, there's a, a liquor called hypnotic that was like a blue color, things of that sort. That's where you will see. So if you have yellow, green, purple, any of these really like, I know like a dragon fruit, like pinkish pataya color, a lot of uh, companies have been doing now as well. Those dyes are in those flavorings. Candy, canned goods, cereal, frozen fruits, packaged foods, food colorings, all the things that we talked about. So yes, when you think about food coloring, we're talking about the traditional food colorings, like how you used to do Easter eggs or put it into cookies and things of that sort. We talked about red velvet earlier, you know, red velvet is chocolate, but you add the red dye to give it that kind of reddish color. And then supplements and nutrition powders. You think 
Well, supplements are supposed to be healthy for you. They're supposed to help you increase the macro micronutrients that your body may not have. You will even find, you know, once you're pregnant, you're supposed to take prenatal vitamins and things of that sort. But you have to be mindful of the casing that these supplements are in. You have to be mindful of the actual added ingredients they're adding to it so it can have longer shelf life. And these things are just not healthy for the body. I rather recommend you just eat the food itself because you'll get a supplement that's like it's going to give you all this vitamin this or vitamin that and you're like okay well just look up the foods that naturally have <laughs> that vitamin and consume that food on a daily basis or foods throughout the week that you can interchange that gives you that vitamin for you to naturally digest and absorb and then also in medications. Now, the last food item we're gonna talk about is blue dye number two. It's also in candy, cereal, baked goods, frozen foods, snacks, patch foods, beverages, and also in pet food. New York introduced a second bill in addition to the first bill we mentioned earlier, SO8615 and A9295, which will require companies to disclose to the state of New York when they add chemicals to foods and drinks that the company secretly self-determined are generally recognized as safe, which is the acronym GRAS, without notifying the FDA, which is the Food and Drug Administration. So I love that New York is doing this. You hear about, we just talked about all these laws that's being passed or bills that are being introduced but New York is actually also making it to where companies have to let you know, hey, I added this to here. I put this in here and not because they feel like, oh, let me, I feel like this is safe. So I don't have to tell anybody It's no longer. You don't have the power as an entrepreneur or somebody that has a business that's producing items that can be consumed to make the decision if a chemical is safe or not. All right. So I love that New York is introducing that. And that would be great for all companies to do this globally to ensure that we are safe with the foods and beverages that we consume. I know that that was all a mouthful. So we're going to go ahead and take a quick break and we'll be right back with you. All right, guys. Now, navigating to our resource center, we want to give you guys access to all these complimentary resources that we have available for you. We have our blog, book suggestions, our menstrual blood chart, exercise moves to kick cramps ass. We have recipes. We have reports. We have research studies that helps to prove how holistic approaches assist with achieving more wellness. We have wellness tips, wellness referrals, so business organizations and individuals that we would like to refer to you that are our strategic partners, wound terminology, maybe there's some wound options that you're not aware of. This can help you out. And lastly, yoga moves to help you kick cramps ass. Feel free to take advantage of this complimentary resource. All right, guys, now back to the show. Welcome back from that break. We hope that you guys enjoyed it. So let's talk about our takeaways from everything that we discussed today with these new laws. Read your label. Number one, read your label. If you do not recognize an ingredient, look it up and see how it may affect the body, how will it impact you, and what does that ingredient actually do? Number two, do your own research. Learn for yourself. If you have time to get on social media and scroll for 30 minutes or an hour at a time, if you have time to binge watch TV, if you have time to be on the phone with your friends and going back and forth, if you have time to devote to anything else, you could take time to devote for yourself and invest in your health or wealth or wellness, right? You want life longevity if you don't want to deal with horrible periods, if you don't want to have the same diagnosis that maybe your parents, your siblings, maybe your grandparents, aunts, uncles, and other people close to you have had. This is the time now to start researching for yourself and taking 30 minutes just to learn about items in your home. I always suggest for people start going in your pantry first, start looking at all the labels, throw away what you see fit. Do the same thing with your household products, your toiletries, anything in your house that has a label that you proactively use, take time to do that. It might be hard to do everything in one day, so make it a project. Make it a month project, maybe one Saturday or Sunday or one day out the week, you do your kitchen. Then maybe the next week, you do your household products. The week after that, maybe you do your toiletries. And then the final week, maybe you make a decision on everything you threw out, what you're going to replace with all natural and organic products, what you can make yourself, because a lot of these are DIY situations that you can really do it yourself. All right. Three, 
invest in your wellness to eliminate and prevent uterine ailments. This is how we are able to kick cramps ass. We got rid of everything that was causing all the health issues that we were having. And once I started learning what those items were and started researching and doing my, my due diligence, this is how I'm able to have pain-free periods. All right, guys. Now, fourth, and the final takeaway is if you need further assistance, schedule a consultation with us so that we may further assist you. We'll drop that information in the description of this episode, but we have complimentary consultations that you can have to introduce you to our menstrual therapy and options that you can take that we can assist you with with our various packages. We have three packages in mind. It's our basic coaching, we have our menstrual therapy, and then we have our total makeover package. All right, guys. So those are things that we can further assist you on through that consultation. And if you decide to pursue services with us, all right. Now, if you have any questions, concerns, comments, feel free to comment to this episode. We are still accepting the listener's mail, but if you would like a more intimate or private discussion, feel free to email us at contact at kickcrampsass.org, which will also be listed in the description of this episode. But to recap, we talked about the new laws that may hinder your period with it being July, Fibroid Awareness Month, we want to bring awareness to ways that you could be developing fibroids or endometriosis or any of the uterine ailments that we have mentioned before, or that way, maybe that we haven't mentioned, maybe amenorrhea, the absence of your cycle, which is very prominent in athletes, maybe, or maybe toxic sock syndrome, which you might have developed from maybe tampons or some of the period products that you use. We are just here to support you and give you information that can really help you have a more manageable menstrual journey. All right, guys. So with all these different laws into play and these bills into play, we just want to be mindful that people are taking this serious, what you're putting in and on your body. And we just want you to be able to do the same. All right. Be sure to like this podcast episode, share it with somebody that you feel that can resonate, subscribe to our website where you can keep up with the latest news, events, and resources. And by subscribing, you will get a 15% off discount that you can use towards our KCA store, towards our products and services. You can also subscribe to our YouTube channel where we have additional content that will be helpful for you in embarking on this pain-free menstrual journey. All right, guys. And if there's not anything else, we want to send gratitude to all of you for tuning in for today. And we want to manifest a positive, productive, and peaceful menstrual journey ahead. Happy Menstruation Monday. We hope you have a marvelous rest of the day and week. And we'll be speaking to you on next Menstruation Monday. Peace. Thank you.